out of the blue, you get a letter and suddenly your car is caught up in the Takata airbag recall. The dealer tells you they have no replacement stock. It's weeks to months away. Your first instinct might be to disconnect the airbags. Is this a smart move or dead set dumb? That's next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars without the conventional deep dive into the showroom floor sewer. Hit me up on the website for that. The Takata airbag recall is the biggest recall in automotive history. Estimates vary, but more than 50 million vehicles are now embroiled. $1 billion in fines and penalties three senior executives charged. The multinational airbag manufacturer with nine factories across four continents went bankrupt in June this year. 30-something brands from McLaren to Toyota, most of the big names are bound up in this scandal. They must be so pleased. Dodgy assembly practices mean over time some Takata airbags can bind up with the inflator unit and potentially spray deadly shrapnel into your grill in a crash. But there's no doubt the vast majority of recalled airbags are not in fact defective. Like most recalls, this one is overwhelmingly a precautionary move. Still, 16 people are dead as a result. And I've had a billion, a billion emails on this. Many people who reach out, it's a nose jerk reaction, I'm sure. They demand the disconnection of their airbags to keep themselves and their families safe. The latest one is from Huawei. My 2007 BMW X5 was just caught up in the Takata scandal. I called my nearest dealer only to be advised that there are no airbags in stock. I will need to wait approximately five weeks. I am extremely concerned that I am transporting my family around in a ticking time bomb and I asked if they could disable the airbags as a temporary fix. They refused and so did BMW Australia. I am getting the runaround. Is there anything I can do to keep my family safe while we wait for the airbags to be fixed? Besides not driving the car at all, what should I do? Ian is a former Mazda owner with similar concerns. We bought a Mazda 6 in 2004, a fantastic vehicle, reliable and low maintenance. In 2014, Mazda sent the airbag recall letter. I rang and asked when will the replacement be available. They said they would let me know. They never followed up. I rang them once every six months. I told the dealer I wanted the airbag disabled. They said we can't do that. This was a car now being used by my teenage children. We banned them from highway driving to decrease the risk factors. Total care factor of sub-zero by Mazda. I will never buy a new Mazda again. Let me say that this is a scary situation for any normal person who cares about their own safety or that of their family. Nobody likes the thought of an ersatz claymore mine pointed at their faces every day as they drive. And it's a philosophical betrayal. The airbag is supposed to keep you safe. And now it's a prop in a bad Michael Bay movie. Not good. The background briefing here. The Takata airbag recall is huge. There are more than 50 million airbags that need replacing globally and there simply is no warehouse anywhere with 50 million spares awaiting deployment. There is a tendency in our society for numbers just to roll off the tongue without too much processing. It's hard to conceptualise 50 million of anything. So if you live to be 70 years old, you will have lived for about 25,000 days. That's about 600,000 hours, and that's about 36 million minutes. Just think about every minute of your grandmother's life. It's roughly two thirds of the way to 50 million. To experience 50 million minutes, you need to live to be 100 years old. So if you make one replacement airbag a minute, it'll only take 100 years to manufacture the required replacements. And that's what I mean when I say this recall is huge. 
Euphemistically, it's going to take some time, don't you think? The reality is that the failure rate of those recalled airbags the rate of actually defective airbags as a proportion of those that have been recalled is about 1%. Takata tested 20,000 recalled airbags and about 200 of those were defective. So to be injured by a defective Takata airbag, you have to be in a serious life-threatening but survivable crash in which the airbag deploys and you have to be that 1 in 100 statistic. If the crash is so severe that you would die anyway, a defective airbag really does not matter because the impact energy of the crash will kill you, not the airbag. If the crash is minor, of course, the airbags do not deploy. Airbags don't deploy in trivial crashes. It's always risky for a manufacturer to deploy the airbag things are looking pretty bleak for you if the airbags actually deploy. The Grim Reaper is warming up to trot you off to the next life. Sometimes the airbag is able to nudge him out of the way. It's understandable for you to be totally frustrated by any delay on this replacement though. After all, it's your head on the metaphorical chopping block here, whatever the statistics, and you don't have to care about the big picture at all. You simply do not want to be in that Goldilocks crash event, right? The one that's going to get you. That serious crash, that one in 100 airbag. Game over in that case, and that's bad. In the face of consumer impotence and looking down the barrel of some replacement airbag delay, you might indignantly demand the dealership disconnect your airbags to keep you safe in the interim. I get that. But let's think about that like the world is actually a rational place. I'd suggest that disconnecting the airbags is completely nutty, however understandable the underlying sentiment. If you disconnect the airbag and then go out and have that Goldilocks crash that will kill you, but from which the airbag might save you with the airbags disconnected, the risk of dying is 100% in that perfectly wrong crash. If you leave the airbags connected, the risk of being injured by a defective Takata airbag in exactly the same crash is just 1%. I know this is an unpalatable, imperfect situation, but the danger to you and your family is grossly elevated with the potentially defective airbag disconnected. On one hand, 100% risk of death disconnected versus just 1% imperfect status quo. Compared to other risks you face routinely in life, the Takata airbag risk is trivial. We do get bombarded with horror advertising about driving, but the reality is that although there is no benign transport system, driving has become absurdly safe. Australian passenger vehicles drove 176 billion kilometres last year. That's about 12 return trips to Pluto, although why you'd go more than once is completely beyond me. It's not even a friggin' planet anymore. In that insane amount of driving, just 813 people died. And I'll admit that's a lot of people, but not in the context of the staggering volume of driving we do. And when I say people, that 813 people is just drivers and passengers. I took out everyone on two wheels and the pedestrians just to focus on the people sitting near the airbags when they departed. That's one death for every 220 million kilometres, one death every 15,000 years of normal driving. Statistics are imperfect on airbags, but the best estimate I could get is roughly 10 airbag deployments per death. So there's one airbag deployment for every 1,500 years of normal driving, ballpark. And not all of them are Takata airbags. And the death statistics include drunk dickheads, intentional risk takers, truck drivers high on amphetamines, people fleeing the cops, and other people just generally driving like complete tools, sending text messages or driving straight through red lights, whatever. Not everyone who dies on the road is an irresponsible dick, but they certainly are overrepresented. If you took irresponsible dicks off the road, 
the stats would look even better. In any case, the risk of dying in a car if you drive responsibly is like the risk of winning lotto only in a bad way. It's extremely remote. To put this in perspective, urban air pollution prematurely kills about 3,000 Australians every year. So does suicide. Drug overdoses, well, they kill about 1,800 Australians annually. Statistically, per head of population, you are two to four times more likely to die from suicide or pollution and roughly twice as likely to be killed by overdosing on a dangerous drug compared with driving. Being involved in the Takata airbag recall increases the profoundly low risk of dying on the road by a factor of one in 100. Personally, I wouldn't be losing any sleep over it. But I would be getting it done, and plenty of people are not, apparently. Some car makers' clean-up rates are still as low as 20%, either because owners cannot be bothered or cannot be located. There's no legislation that compels owners of cars affected by recalls to get those recalls done. Car makers' hands are completely tied on this too. They seem to be fitting the replacements as soon as they become available, and they've taken many steps to locate owners, which is difficult because many of the affected vehicles have changed hands several times. Early on, many customer care call centres could certainly have been better communicators on this, but this never buy brand X again business, which I hear a lot of, is a case of holding the wrong party accountable for this problem, in my view. Car makers should integrate and share ownership data with the registration authorities, and there should also probably be legislation that compels owners to get those recalls done. There's no evidence that the ACCC found anything whatsoever amiss about the behaviour of car makers surrounding this recall, and I know this was investigated. No car makers appear to be dropping the ball here, and even the ones that are typically very Hannibal Lecter at customer service, and I'm looking at you, Ford, Jeep, Volkswagen. Amazing. Perhaps, you know, there might be hope, but probably not. It seems to me that the real failure here is one of education. A much better public information campaign would have prevented a great deal of emotional angst and uncertainty, not to mention negative sentiment from affected people. This disconnect my airbags now sentiment really needs to be addressed officially and spelt out. My aim here is not to confront you or disagree strenuously with you if your vehicle is affected and you are waiting interminably for an airbag replacement. That's got to be stressful and Takata certainly are gaping assholes for getting this so stupendously, so brain-bendingly wrong. I simply hope to detain you with some facts and perspective concerning the absolute risk that this situation poses to you between now and when the dealer can clean up to Carter's mess. To find out if your car is affected by this recall or any other recall, visit productsafety.gov.au. That's productsafety.gov.au. That's the official ACCC's recalls portal here in Australia. Or grab the rego papers and march up to any authorised dealer in their service department and they can use the VIN code and the high-tech miracle of the internets to check on that for you. Getting a recall done does not cost you a cent, and in extremis, it might even save your neck. There are tens of thousands of cars driving around today on Australian roads with outstanding safety recalls, and yours simply does not have to be one of them. I'm John Cadogan. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. 